All right, what's up guys? This is Brett from FBA Excel, and this is gonna be a quick start video on specifically just the search query commander. So there's another one that shows you how to set up the keyword dominator, kind of keyword research portion. Uh, and then this is gonna be on the new search query commander tool. Uh, it's pretty similar as far as the kind of basic setup and kind of data importing and getting the tool uh, ready to go. So that's just kind of going to be what I'm going to cover in this training here. There's a supplemental guide here you can download from the members area and I would just recommend kind of starting if you're just wanting to look at the search query commander tool uh, with these four steps here. So this is going to be what I'm going to be covering basically in this training. I'm not going to actually go over downloading the files because you can just follow along with the guide here and it walks you through with screenshots. Uh, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory once you get into it. Uh, there's a few notes and stuff in the guide with related to kind of pop-up blockers and stuff like that. So just, just basically read down through it and follow along. You can see how you download the search query weekly reports. That's one of the main kind of data inputs uh, for this tool. We do have a Chrome extension that's going to be out very soon that will hopefully automate a lot more of this. But uh, for now, it does the job. And uh, again, just kind of follow along with this. I'm going to pretty much go over... Uh, step by step in this in this video once you have the files saved so the goal would be to i'm just going to expand this and make this a little bigger so uh, when you first download keyword dominator you're going to get kind of this initial default template and if you're just worried about using the search query commander you can actually turn off uh, some of these tool or some of the check boxes related to the keyword research so uh, for search query commander i'm going to go over pretty much what we have uh, to date, it's March 5th, as far as the input files. So we can input our search term impression share, our advertised products, our sponsor product search term report, brand analytics, uh, Cerebro. And then down here, you've got the main weekly files. So we'll tick that on and then the rank tracking. So rank tracking uses either the historical Helium 10 Files. There's also in the um, in the training guide, you'll see a custom link that you can download if you have another SaaS tool that you use that you can just easily kind of port over the, the data if you want to use that. But we use Helium 10 for the most part. We've also got uh, Ranks keyword tracking. This is going to be our own internal keyword tracking. It's coming very soon. You'll just be able to tick that box on and the keywords will automatically update as far as the organic and sponsor ranking without doing anything. So that'll be That'll be really powerful. And then the co-pilot mode, that's a new feature as well. It's not quite yet deployed uh, in all accounts, but that's going to be for the Chrome extension to automate some of the search query downloads. So stay tuned for uh, some more uh, training on that. Anyway, the first step is basically to tick the boxes that you see here. And this is just going to be kind of the default uh, search query commander inputs for now. And then you're going to come up, hit download new data. And then that's going to open you to each of the locations where you can save this, uh, these, these file types. And again, that's, there's step-by-step -step instructions in the actual training guide. Uh, the trick is you'll just name them according to these name codes. So you can see it's labeled here, file name. And then the location is the folders where you save the files. And for the search query performance, weekly files you can see it's sqr underscore then the asin and then underscore then the week number we actually pull the data from inside the file but this is just to kind of stay more organized uh, so anyway that's that's going to be the, what you're going to learn by reading the training guide and then the only other mi uh, menu item i would want to mention is the file import move mode so if you tick this on uh, what it's going to do is you can see here i hopped over into a google drive folder that uh, already has the files saved so when you authorize Keyword Dominator, you're gonna get this folder structure built out automatically. And for the Search Query Commander, we're more interested in Amazon folder, Helium 10 folder, and then the other folder. The other folder is where we're gonna put the rank data. So uh, the step-by-step the -step training guide shows you how to save the files to these folders to where you get this kind of final output. So you can see here, here's our search term report uh, that we downloaded from Amazon. Here's our weekly files. Uh, for our search query performance, search term impression share, brand analytics, advertised products. And then if I back up, you've got in the Helium 10, you've got your Cerebro. And then in um, other, you can see I've got one 
rank file here and it's the historical rank file from helium 10 so uh, anyway that's going to be the kind of point you want to get to before you import the data and then once you have the, the data saved it's all pretty well automated uh, the only thing is this file import move mode if you tick that on which it won't be on by default so by default it'll look like this um, if you do tick this on as the data comes into keyword dominator it's actually going to get moved automatically to this imported folder structure so you can see the imported is the exact same structure it's just going to be where uh, that imported data gets kind of saved after it pulls it into the, the tool. And the benefit there is you can create multiple copies of Keyword Dominator, name them, you know, your ASIN or whatever, um, and then tick this box on. And then as you pull in the data, it's going to keep that new folder structure clean for the next run. So that's kind of the whole intent there. But I'm going to actually take it off here for now uh, just because I want to kind of keep uh, being able to reference back to it. So. All right, so that's that's where we're going to get to, and then all we're literally going to do is come up and say, all right, I'm ready to import it. All right, and then you just get a few notes here related to this first one's related to the, the keyword research portion, so that's not really applicable in this video. Talked about the import move mode, uh, and then the duplicate copies. Again, that's how you do research for multiple niches, you know, multiple ASINs in this case for... Um, for search query commander. So I'm gonna hit yes. All right, and you'll start getting a status update here along the right as your file comes in. So you can see there's our advertised products came in, search term. Now I will say if you're gonna pull in advertising data, you do need to pull in your advertised products report. That's where we actually get the advertised ASINs to sync up with um, your search term report and your search term impression share report. So you'll want to have that advertised products as kind of a requisite and it it's specified in the um, in the training guide as well so you can see now our weekly files are starting to pull in uh, and then the last one's going to be our rank tracking all right and then once that is done you're going to get this prompt here um, it's, you can pretty much just read it and I'll kind of explain what's going on but one point I wanted to make is if you do have a ton of uh, data, like say you're trying to bring in a year's worth of weekly search query performance reports right off the bat, or you're trying to bring in multiple um, child ASIN reports that you wanna put all in one copy, which you can do that. Uh, you do have to map down here uh, the child ASIN to the parent just in kind of a two column list here. Uh, and you do that before we do this next step I'm going to show you. But uh, the point I wanted to make is if you do have a ton of data you're trying to import, especially on this first iteration, uh, what I would recommend is maybe turn off a few of these and just bring in your search query performance data first and then do a second import. You can always just kind of toggle these checkboxes on and off and then uh, click this button here and it's going to bring in anything that's in that Google Drive folder that's you know named correctly. So you can kind of split your imports if the data set that you're trying to import is too large is kind of the point I wanted to make. So anyway, uh, with this with this uh, example here, all of our data came in fine. So we're ready to kind of go to the final step of setting up the search query commander. Now, again, the point here is if you did want to say you had child ASIN and you could even do a custom group. It doesn't have to be a parent ASIN. So you had multiple child ASINs and you wanted to kind of research those together. You can fill this table in here and I'll show you where this kind of custom field comes into play. But uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of skip over all the keyword research aspects of, of Keyword Dominator and just hop into the new, uh, this is the weekly view. And you'll see that the formatting is kind of screwed up right at first and that gets taken care of here in this final sync operation. Uh, the first step is just to get the data in here, so that's what we did. And I've noticed some of the different markets and whatnot have different formats, so it's a little, uh, a little ugly when we first start here. But as soon as we finish with the sync sync operation, so I just click the sync button right here, and I'm going to hit uh, yes. And this is just going to kind of finalize everything. It's going to fill in all of the advanced sections for us with data, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so that should just take about 30 seconds or so, and then you'll get this prompt here. I would go ahead and read the tips here uh, because it's gonna kind of tell you how to get started using this weekly view. I'm just gonna hit okay, and you'll see all the formatting there kind of fixed itself. 
Um, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over the features in this video. We'll have some follow-up training and we're going to start uh, building out the training guide better. This is just kind of an initial uh, getting started type of video, but uh, just real quickly, this is the weekly view and there's different sections you can expand. So with each of the funnel kind of metrics, as you go down the funnel, you've got uh, trends and indicators. You've got the group that I mentioned. If you did fill that in, that data would show up here. So that's collapsed by default. Uh, you've got some automated filters here. If you check any of these, it's going to manipulate this database and kind of filter things in an automated fashion. And there'll be some recommendations and stuff. I'll just show you one here. So I'm going to click on this. I'm um, going to say yes. All right, so you can see it filtered the table here by the suggested action, and it's showing us now all of the search queries where our click-through rate and our conversion rate is better than the market. So it's giving us some suggestions here, and you can do that for each of the different types. So that's some like actionable things that you can start deploying in your account. Uh, as far as the advanced options and insights, go ahead and just click this plus button here, and you can see what we have implemented thus far. So you've got PPC performance stuff, you've got targeting data, you've got keyword and rank tracking data, uh, some price data over here, and we've got some stuff hidden and stuff planned uh, in the back, back end. So if you do have ideas, we've got areas that we can easily kind of add new columns and things like that. So uh, that's the weekly view. It's, it's more meant to just kind of filter and uh, try to make sense of all of the data all in one place. You can see that the weekly column, uh, there is a default sort. So if I click on this ta uh, table filter here, the button there, uh, it's going to default sort me to search query year and week. And that just makes it helpful to kind of visualize the progress week to week of each search term. Uh, and then the um, menu headers, they have explanations. So if you aren't sure what they are, you can go ahead and hover over those just to kind of learn about them. The next one is the charts. So if you click on this button, it's going to open it up into a separate window. And the ch the idea there is you can actually uh, pin the window to the top of your uh, to the top of your your kind of browser and you'd be able to see your charts uh, in the same kind of view as uh, this weekly view. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to open it in um, in this tab. So you can see here, this is kind of the default uh, data set. Now, as we filter our weekly view, all of this data visually is gonna change. So this is just a way to kind of visualize everything. Uh, you can track events. So let's just say, uh, so basically the idea down here is to track events that you're working on and improvements that you're trying to improve certain search queries. So you can just pick your ASIN uh, add a note and then just say, you know, I don't know, top of search campaign or maybe you change your title or trying to do different things and that's going to show up kind of on this chart. Uh, it's going to show up here as well and then this just helps you visualize uh, how many <clears throat> recommendations for each kind of main um, improvement area that you can make. So it's more of just a visual sheet here. Uh, the last one is actually my favorite. So this one's going to be a way uh, and you can see that Google Sheets got some like caching issues. If you bounce back and forth one time, it usually fixes that. But um, basically, this is another view of our um, our weekly data. It's just going to be grouped, so you can expand this and see uh, the same type of information. Uh, this is just going to be kind of collapsed down. It's going to be default sorted by purchases. Um, so your your most orders is going to be at the top here, so you can see. 418. Uh, you know, these with high conversion rates, anything in blue means your, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, green means your conversion rates better than the markets. Um, so anything that's towards the top of this sheet that's green here, those are going to be ones you really want to key in. Make sure you've got a lot of, of targeting going on in the right places, the right uh, placements, things like that. And as far as the uh, as far as the rank tracking, I don't think my date here is right. So you do have to set this. It's going to be set uh, by default to today. Let me figure out. 
All right, so yeah, I didn't have the date range based on the data, the demo data that I had. So anyway, you just set that, make sure it encompasses the data that you've saved from Helium 10 or that custom rank file. You can expand it as well. Um, I mean, I don't have it in this test file, but uh, if you had more days, you could obviously see that there. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this training video. The only other thing I wanted to mention is um, obviously, once this is set up the first time, it's meant to, you know, throughout the month, uh, kind of be referenced back. So that's where you can name this, uh, whichever, typically whichever ASIN that you're pulling in the search query data or that you're running uh, Keyword Dominator on. If you're familiar with kind of the keyword research portion, you put your ASIN right here and there's some other tools that help you build up keyword lists and things like that. Uh, but you would name the file accordingly and then you would you can create another copy uh, from the template from the members area and um, name that for your next ASIN that you're wanting to do research on or set up for the search query commander and then that way they stay set up and you can just uh, download the series of search query, weekly search query performance reports that you want to append to your current file uh, and then if you want to up, update any of the supplemental data, you can just snag a new copy of that. And then it becomes kind of a working copy. So that's kind of the point I wanted to make uh, where you're not actually setting up a new file every time you're wanting to look into it. It's, you know, once you set it up the first time, you've done 90% of the work and it gets a lot easier. So um, anyway, there'll be follow-up training on more use cases and things like that. I didn't want to make this this first video super long. The other thing is definitely reference the step-by-step -step guide in the members area because that's going to be the main place for the UI, uh, UI references, and advanced training as well. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.